ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحديث هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is truly worthy of all praise we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and once we praise him we acknowledge our deficiency in praising him as he deserves to be praised allah is as he has praised himself to allah belongs the most beautiful names which allah has taken unto himself and attributes of complete perfection which befit his greatness and majesty and indeed all thanks is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is the source of all blessings and peace and salutations upon the messenger of allah the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alamin dear brothers and sisters last week we began to speak about the night journey of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his ascension into the heavens and we mentioned the two places in the Quran where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentions these two incidents surah al-isra subhanalladhi asra bi 'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tells us of the night journey in surah al-isra and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala free of all deficiencies Allah tabarak wa ta'ala praises himself saying the one who took his slave on the night journey from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa which we have blessed this area this area which is around it alladhi barakna hawla li nuriyahu min ayatina that we might show him our signs and also we alluded to the to the incident of the ascension the first part talks about the night journey from Mecca which is of course in Arabia the heart of Arabia to Al-Aqsa which is the furthest part which is in Jerusalem where the masjid is the masjid al-Aqsa and then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in surah an-najm mentioned the ascension which is when the prophet went into the heavens and we discussed the incidents that happened before this the muqaddimah to all of this how the prophet sallam suffered a boycott from the quraish and in the three years that they suffered this boycott they were cast into the open desert where he lost his <coughs> wife she died khadija radiyallahu anha and also abu talib died and then the boycott came to an end but the persecution didn't stop there so the prophet went to the surrounding areas namely taif and the people of taif cast him out and they stoned him and then after that the prophet sallam returned back to makkah only to suffer the same persecution And at the end of all of this Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave the prophet of some this miracle. And the word miracle generally is used as something which goes to goes against the norm, something which wouldn't normally happen. But also part and parcel of the definition of a miracle of the prophets is something which has tahdi in it there is a challenge in it for all of mankind and this is why i say that the term miracle is used loosely for the ascension because there's no tahdi in it allah didn't challenge 
mankind to go up to the heavens. But this was Takrima for the Prophet. Allah blessed him. And Allah gave him this blessing above all of the other people. Then he carried him in one night across the world from one place to another place, which at that time was impossible to carry to, to take that journey in such little time. And then Allah Ta'ala caused him to ascend into the heavens. In which Allah Taala showed him his signs, and the Prophet met with the prophets, and Allah revealed to him the secrets, some of the secrets of the heavens, and Allah gave him a gift, the gift of the prayer. So, brothers and sisters, where we finished last week was when the angel Jibreel السلام, came to the Prophet وسلم, I should mention. That the story of the Islam Miraj has been narrated by a number of companions. 26 male companions and one female companion narrated the story of Islam Miraj. And there are many different books of hadith. And if we were to gather, to them, to gather them all together to narrate them, it would be many, many khutb. And time doesn't allow that. So we will rely on some of the narrations, the most authentic narrations, which are in Sahih al-Bukhari. And they give, each narration gives something extra. So it is something worthy for a person to go back and look at and try and read from different sources, so as to get a more complete picture. And some of the details of the Islam Miraj are in the astounding. The Prophet describes the Prophet Ibrahim <coughs> and he says when I saw Ibrahim السلام, he resembled he resembled me he looked like me and he described Musa السلام, that he was a tall man and he described Isa السلام, who was Jesus the son of Mary who was of middle height and he described him that he resembled one of the people who was Urwa ibn Zubayr al-Thaqafi Urwa ibn Masood al-Thaqafi I beg your pardon Urwa ibn Masood al-Thaqafi He described him that he looked like him So there are many details which we just don't have time to go over But at least the main ma'alim or the main pillars of this journey inshallah we'll try and describe First one as we mentioned last week when the, when the Archangel Jibreel, I mean the Sama, came to the Prophet وسلم, to take him, he came in his original form. And he, the first muhimma that he did was he opened the chest of the Prophet. The narration which is mentioned, the Prophet was sleeping between Jafar ibn Abi Talib and another one of his companions, and he was raised up from there. And Jibreel Asam opened his chest. And he took out his heart and washed it in a copper vessel. And then he filled it with Iman. That was what we spoke about last week. This is the Muqaddimah to this journey. There is a preparation before making a journey like this. That was the preparation to prepare the heart of the Prophet And to fill it with Iman. Because don't forget, where does this journey end? The ultimate end of this journey is to meet Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So a person has to be prepared for that. Even a Nabi of Allah, even the best of the Anbiya of Allah, the best of Allah's creation, the Prophet Sallallahu needed to be prepared for that. Brothers and sisters, after the Prophet was prepared, now there's need for transport. Alas, United Buses couldn't make this gym. They are all arduous. <coughs> Allah wa ta'ala prepared the transportation of the Prophet sallallahu <coughs> The narration which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet says, ثم أُتِيتُ بِدَابَتِ دُونَ الْبَغِلُ وَفَوْقَ الْحِمَارِ أبيض. The Prophet describes his transportation. He says then, a riding beast was brought for me. 
It was bigger than a donkey and smaller, smaller than a mule. So in between a mule and a donkey. And that the Prophet described it and that it was white. And this was known as Buraq. That was the name which was given to this animal. So the Prophet says, فَحُمِلْتُ عَلَيْهِ So I was made to ride or to sit upon it. فَانْطَلَقَ بِجِبْرِيلِ حَتَّى أَتَى السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا فَاسْتَفْتَحْ This is the narration in Bukhari. It talks about the ascension. And he says that when I was made to sit upon the Buraq, one narration mentions that the speed of this animal, that its next step would be as far as its eye can see. So the next step that it took was as far as its horizon. That was how fast this animal rode. And Allah Ta'ala can do that. Allah can do what He wants. If He wants to create an animal that has this lightning speed, Allah can create it. And he, is there anything which Allah isn't able to do? Think about this world. In one instant, Allah will convert this world. Sometimes when I think about these things, I think, what? This is something that seems so difficult for mankind, but for Allah it's so easy. Do you ever think about the Qiyamah? When Allah Ta'ala says, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِيهِ فِيهِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدًا وَحُمِلَةُ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا Allah Ta'ala talks about the blowing of the trumpet. That just in one instant, one instant when Allah orders the angel to blow into the trumpet, what will be the effect of that blowing? وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً بَاحِدًا In one instant, the earth and the mountains will be carried and shaken. One shaking, one quaking that will level them all. So if Allah can do that with just one blowing of the trumpet, then why can't Allah create an animal which can carry the Prophet in this speed? The Prophet said, so I was carried upon this animal until we reached the lower, lowest of the heavens. And Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came to it, he ordered it. Fastafta. He ordered for it to be opened. Which tells us that the, the heavens, they have gates. And those gates are guarded. And the guards are angels. And Jibreel alayhi salam ordered for the gate to be opened for the Prophet So it was said, Man hada? Who is this who asks for the gate to be opened? So Jibreel alayhi salam answered, Jibreel, it is I, Jibreel. And it was said, who is with you? Wa man ma'ak? So he says, Muhammad. Muhammad is with me. So look at this journey. A journey of the best of Allah's creation and the most beloved to Allah, the Prophet And his companion, the keeper of the secrets of the heavens, Jibreel Amin, the best of the angels, the one who is entrusted with the most important of all of the muhimmat, the responsibilities that the angels are given, and that is to bring the word of Allah to mankind upon the earth. What a blessed union. Two of the best of the messengers. Jibreel the messenger of the heavens and Muhammad the messenger of the earth. So they come to the lower heaven and the angel asks, who are you? And Jibreel answers, it is Jibreel. And he asks, who is with you? And he says, Muhammad. Because the angels don't open the gates of the heavens to just anyone. <coughs> So when the angel hears Muhammad, he says to him that has he been sent for? The angel asked, has he been sent for? Has Muhammad sallallahu been sent for? So he replies to him, yes, now. So he says to him, marhaban bin. And he bids him welcome. 
the best of a person that could come has come. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Who is saying this? The guardian over the heaven. So then the Prophet sallallahu is bid to end. So then it was open, the gate was open. And Adam. So he says, when I entered into that heaven, there is Adam alayhi salam, the father of all mankind, our father, the father of all mankind. Allah created Adam alayhi salam with his hands. And Allah blew into him the spirit. From him came all men and women. So he's our father. And Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he entered the first heaven, who was he greeted by? His father. And he doesn't know him. So Jibreel alayhi salam tells him, this is your father, Adam alayhi salam. And he says salam to Adam alayhi salam. So, Jibreel, so the Adam alayhi salam replies to him and Adam alayhi salam replies to him and says after saying salam, to him, the most uh, a righteous son, a righteous son and a righteous Nabi. Welcome to a righteous son and a righteous Nabi. This is how Adam al Islam describes the Prophet. So, of course, in the first heaven, the Prophet meets his father, Adam al Islam. And then Allah's Messenger وسلم, is carried to the next heaven. And the same thing again. When he comes to the next heaven, the guardian of the heaven, when he's asked to open the door, he asks, who is it? So he says to him, I am Jibreel. So he says, who is with you? So he replies to Muhammad. So he says, has he been sent for? So he replies, yes, Allah has sent for him. You can see from the answer, that the angels were awaiting the coming of the Prophet ﷺ. They are ordered to open the gates when he comes. They didn't just open by themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this system. That the angels will ask who he is and then they will open the gate for him. A person might easily think when he looks at the status of the Prophet that the Prophet could do anything he wanted to. But Allah hasn't allowed that for anybody. This is solely the right of Allah. Everybody else fits in a system. That system is like this. Because Rububiya is the right of Allah alone. Lordship is only Allah's right. It is nobody else's right. Everybody else is creation. And they are always in need of their Lord Allah. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He doesn't just wave a wand and open the gates of all the heavens in one go. No. Allah has made a system. And it is within this system that even the Anbiya have to, have to live by. The Prophet then came to the second heaven. And in the second heaven, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he arrived, إِذَا يَحْيَى وَعِيسَى The Prophet Yahya alayhi salam, John the Baptist, John, the Prophet John, and the Prophet Jesus, both of them in the next heaven. And they are to greet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Jibreel alayhi salam says, and they are cousins. Jibreel introduced them and they are cousins. Their mothers were cousins. And so, after that, the Prophet says salam to them, and they reply to him, Welcome to a righteous brother and a righteous Nabi of Allah. This is how they reply to him. Don't forget the Anbiya of Allah, they have given Allah a pact. They have made a pact with Allah. What is that pact? Allah has taken from them a pact that when my Nabi comes to you, that when he comes to you, you will believe in him and you will aid him. And then Allah said, 
Did you make iqrar? Did you verify this? Did you give your oath to this? قالوا أقرأ. قال فشهد وأنا ما أكون من الشاهدين. So he said to bear witness and I am with you a witness. All of the Anbiya, they were ordered to believe in the Prophet and to hate the Prophet. صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم met in that heaven the Prophets Jesus al Yahya al Yahya and Isa alayhi salam. And then he came to the next heaven. And again the same scenario. He came to the gates of the heavens. And again in the gates of the heavens he's asked the same questions. <coughs> and then the Prophet said, Falamma khalastu ila Yusuf. In that heaven, the third heaven, Yusuf alayhi salam. The Prophet Joseph. Yusuf. And Yusuf alayhi salam was given half of the beauty of the children of Adam. He was one of the most beautiful, the most handsome people. So Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi met him. And Jibreel says to him, Hada Yusuf, Fasallam alayhi, Fasallam tu alayhi faradda, Thumma qala marhaban bil akhi salih wa nabi salih. So I said salam to him, so he replied, Salam, and he said to me, Welcome to a righteous brother and a righteous Nabi of Allah. So he says, then I pass to the next heaven. And when I came to the next heaven, and again the same scenario, Allah wa ta'ala made the Prophet go through the same thing. Security gates. Even the Jannah has security gates. Not because anybody, Allah Taala, can make them, prevent them. But this is the system that Allah has created. And it is through this system that all of the people have to go through. So Allah's Messenger met Yusuf And then he came to the next heaven, the fourth heaven. And he was, he asked, Jibreel Islam again asked for the heaven to be opened. So then it was opened and then the next Nabi was Idris Alayhi Salaam. The Prophet Idris alayhi salam. And the Prophet Idris alayhi salam again greeted the Prophet and he said to him, Marhaban bi akh salih wa nabi salih. Welcome to the righteous brother and the righteous Prophet. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam went further on to the next heaven. When he went to the next heaven, Allah wa ta'ala again the same system. And then he came to the next heaven, he met Harun alayhi salam. Harun, the brother of Musa alayhi salam. Who Allah wa ta'ala made a prophet at the request of Musa alayhi salam. Made him his wazir, his helper. <coughs> so the Prophet <coughs> said salam to him. And again the same thing. He replied to him salam and he said to him, Welcome to the righteous brother and the righteous prophet. And then the Prophet came to the next heaven. And in the next heaven, he saw Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam again replied in the same way. And when the Prophet passed him, Musa began to weep. Musa alayhi salam began to weep. So he asked, or he was asked, why do you weep? So he says, Abdun, Bo'itha min ba'di. He is a ghulam on Bu'itha min Ba'di. He is younger than me. He came after me. So he was sent as a Nabi, but he was sent after me. But more of his Ummah will enter the paradise than my Ummah. So look how the, um, the Anbiya, they have love and care for their Ummah. That Musa is driven to tears because his Ummah is not as much as the Ummah of the Prophet. What did the Prophet say? He encourages to marry women and to marry so that they will bear children because he said that on the day of judgment the Anbiya will compete one to another who will have more followers and the greatest of all of the followers will be the followers of the Prophet by the words of Musa himself and you might recall the hadith where the Prophet is presented with all of the nations on the day of judgment sorry in the dream when the Prophet saw those nations being presented and he described some of the prophets that they had a few people with them. And then there were some prophets who had one or two people with them. And there were prophets that had nobody with them. 
And then there was a huge multitude of people, and the Prophet thought that there was Ummah. And he was told that this is the, this is the nation of Musa, of Moses. And then another multitude of people presented, and then he was told that this is your nation. So brothers and sisters, the prophets will lie on the day of judgment. Who will have more followers? And then, the prophet was a <coughs> to the seventh heaven. And how many heavens are there? There are seven heavens. Allah has made seven heavens. So the Prophet was carried to the seventh heaven. And the Prophet says, Falamma khallastu fa'idha Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says, when I came through the gates of the seven heavens, I met with Ibrahim alayhi salam. And look at how Jibreel alayhi salam introduces him. Hada abuk. This is your father, Ibrahim. So the Prophet says, salam to him. قَالَ فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَرَدَّ السَّلَامُ قَالَ مَرْحَبًا بِلِبْنِ الصَّالِحِ وَالنَّبِيِ الصَّالِحِ Ibrahim is introduced as the father of the Prophet And remember that the Prophet is from the lineage of Ismail Ismail was the son of the Prophet Ibrahim So he's introduced as the son of, of Ibrahim And as we mentioned before, the Prophet described him that he resembled me. That the Prophet Ibrahim resembled me in the way he looked. Isn't it, subhanAllah, strange how many things the Prophet, when he described, he described himself as Ibrahim. For example, when the Prophet talks about tafdeel of the Anbiya, merit of the Anbiya, we believe in all of the Anbiya. There is no distinction when it comes to belief. Many people get this misconception that when you say one Nabi is better than another, another, another Nabi, that this is incorrect. No, this is correct. Allah hasn't made all people the same. No two people in this hall are the same. In the sight of Allah, people are, because of their Iman and their Amal, their righteous actions, they are, there is the Father, there is between them some distinction. And just in the same way there is distinction between the Anbiya of Allah. When Allah's Messenger talks about this distinction, He says that the five, they are the greatest of all of the Anbiya. They are the Ulul Azm of the Anbiya. And amongst those five, there are two which are more outstanding. And those are Ibrahim Khalilullah and me. And Allah has chosen me above Him. So the Prophet often he talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam and the merit of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So brothers and sisters, as you can see, we have barely touched the story of the Islam and Miraj, and already time has left us. So inshallah we will inshallah discuss uh, the rest of the story of the Islam and Miraj inshallah in the next khutbah. But the point about this Islam, what is the hikmah behind it? Why Allah wa ta'ala took the Prophet of some and showed him the secrets of the heavens and the earth. <coughs> that whilst the Prophet was living those harsh, difficult years in Mecca, being persecuted, and his companions being persecuted, Allah showed him that after difficulty there will come ease, and you will have victory. And Allah wa will make your religion spread, and the people will accept it. And that whilst now there is difficulty, ease will come. So it's this year, <coughs> consolation to the Prophet and enjoining upon him to have sabr and also for his ummah. It was also to show his ummah, the merit of their Prophet and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him victory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people who hear the truth back and the truth give us the ability to act upon him also make us a people who hear the false back and be false and give us the ability to avoid our own man's own. Allah <laughs> 
صلى الله عليه بها عشر اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض الله مع ربعة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب النبيك أجمعين وعن أهل بيت طيبين الطاهرين وارض الله معنا ما أهم بمنك وكلبك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين وحم حوز الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة ويرهن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عادكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله لذي الذين أذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة